we already discussed that there are several problems which might occur because of concurrency. Let's see these problems. Last update problem. To demonstrate problems which can occur due to concurrency, let us take simple airlines reservation database. Each record includes number of reserved seats and some other information. Here we are taking two transactions T1 and T2. Transaction T1 transfer and reservations from one flight whose number of reserve seats are stored in data item X to another flight whose number of reserve seats are stored in another data item Y. Means we have two flights, the number of reservations of this flight 1 stored in data item X, another flight F2, number of reservations stored in this flight F2 stored in Y. This second transaction T2 just reserves M seats on the flight F1. So we can write all these operations like this. First we need to read the data item X which stores the number of reservations in this flight 1. We need to transfer N reservations from flight 1 to flight 2. So subtract this N number of reservations from this data item X. And then write that update operation onto the disk. Then we need to add that n reservations to this data item y. So for read the data item y, add n value, then write that updated value onto the disk. And the second transaction for read item x means we want to reserve m seats on the first flight. So x equal to x plus m store that onto the disk. See here when we are interacting with the database like Oracle, we never see this kind of write of some data item x means just we will use update command to update this value x db writer process will does not write to database files because of issuing commit statement means after issuing the commit statement whatever the operations which need not be stored onto the disk commit means it is the just end of transaction when we issue update command all that update information will not be stored onto the disk. First all these statements will be saved into the buffer. This buffer will be written onto the disk at some point of time which might depends on scenarios like this when checkpoint happens. Means when it meets some certain conditions this buffer will be written onto the disk when dirty buffers reaches threshold. Means uh, when we have operations within transactions that are committed are called dirty buffers. If this dirty buffers reaches some threshold then this buffer might be written into the disk and third case there is no free buffer means this buffer is filled with transactions there is no space to write new transactions in that case this buffer will be written onto the disk if any of this kind of uh, scenarios meet this buffer will be written onto the disk so even if we commit the transaction it need not be written onto the disk so we can conclude that even after committing the transaction, it need not be written onto the disk at the same time. It might be delayed. Now let's see the last update problem. Suppose that transaction T1 and T2 are submitted approximately at the same time and here we are allowing concurrency. So their operations are interleaved as shown below means this first two operations read and updation operation of first transaction executed first then second transactions first two statements executed then this update is written onto the disk then reading of y value within transaction 1 is executed after that transaction t2 write operation executed later this y is updated and written onto the disk if operations within these two transactions are executed in this kind of interleaved fashion the final value of x might be incorrect because of t2 reads the value of x before t1 changes in the database see here this updated value not written onto the disk before that this transaction t2 reads this x value so the updated value resulting from t1 is lost this x value is updated but this transaction 2 is not considering this updated value and it is again updating. So here we lost that update value of this T1. This is called last update problem.
Let us understand this last object problem with simple example. Assume its value 80 means uh, within first flight we have 80 reservations. We want to transfer 5 reservations from this first flight to second flight. So we need to subtract this and value from x. The final x value will be 75. Before writing the 75 onto the disk, these two operations of transaction to execute it. So this read item of x value will be again 80 because this update is not yet done. This second transaction reserving 4 seats on the first flight so x value will be 84. Then this transaction third operation executed so x value will be 75 after that this transaction t2 third operation write of item x executed now this x value will be 84 here we lost this first update in transaction t1 if this transaction is executed in serial fashion this x value should be 75 after the for that 75 we need to add this Four seats, so it should be 79. But here we have 84. Here we lost this first update value, so we call this as a lost update problem. Let's see the dirty read problem. This problem occurs when one transaction updates database item and then the transaction fails for some reason. Meanwhile, that updated value is read by another transaction before it is rolled back. See here, suppose this transaction 1 first three statements executed, x value is written onto the disk, but this transaction is not yet committed here, we have some more other statements. Meanwhile, this transaction T2 reads this uncommitted x value. Suppose this transaction 1 failed means it is aborted, and then this x value will be rolled back. So the value of this second transaction x value will be invalid because uh, this updated value is rolled back to original value that is why this read of uncommitted data is called dirty read let us assume x value 80 we want to transfer 5 reservation from this flight 1 to another flight so updated x value is 75 that is written onto the disk now that x value is read by this second transaction which is 75 and it reserves 4 more seats on the same flight so updated x value is 79 but this transaction 1 failed due to some reason this transaction 1 rolled back to its original state so x value will be 80 see here this read operation read x value as 75 this is happened due to reading uncommitted data so if any transaction reads uncommitted data that read is called the read third one unrepeatable read problem this unrepeatable read problem might occur suppose t1 transaction reads same data item two times between the two reads another transaction t2 changes the value of the data item then in second read you will get different value for the same read that is called unrepeatable read problem for example during airline reservation transaction customer inquires about seat availability on several flights when the customer decides on particular flight the transaction then reads the number of seats on that flight second time it may end up reading different value Suppose customer checks his balance in his account when his first trade it was 10,000 he wants to transfer some amount to some other account meanwhile before transferring that amount to another account suppose credit card bill is auto debited from the same account when he try to read the second time available balance is 1500 first it was 10,000 in the second read within the same transaction it is 1500 this is called unrepeatable read this is caused due to another transaction t2 updated the data item value x between these two reads this is called unrepeatable read problem and fourth one incorrect summary problem if one transaction is calculating an aggregate summary of function on number of database items 
while other transactions are updating some of these items. In that case, the aggregate function may calculate some values before updated and others after updated. See here, transaction TP reads X after any subtracted. Here, any subtracted and reads Y before N is updated. This Y should be read after this updation value. So, there is a chance of transfer money. Let's take one example here. Assume X value AD. We want to transfer by reservation from this first flight to another flight. So, updated X value will be 75. Suppose this transaction T3 is calculating total number of seats reserved on Flight 1, Flight 2 and Flight 3. Flight 1 reservations are stored in this data item X. Flight 2 reservations are stored in this data item Y. And Flight 3 reservations are stored in this data item A. Suppose this transaction T3 is calculating total number of reservations on these 3 flights. Then assume number of reservations on flight 3 is 20 because this transaction T3 is calculating total number of reservations so initially total will be 0 after adding this flight 3 reservations total number of reserved seats will be 20 then we need to add 2 more values from flight 1 and flight 2 here 5 seats are transferred from flight 1 to flight 2 after execution of these three statements, now this aggregation function adds the first flight reservations. Here x value is 75. So 20 plus 75, total 95. And see here this aggregate function again adding y reservations. This n value is subtracted from first flight, but that n value is not added to second flight. Before addition of this n value to this y, this y value is read by this transaction T3. So, y value suppose 50, that 50 is added. So, final total is 145. Here we did not consider this update operation. So, we got incorrect value because if this transaction is executed in serial fashion, this first flight reservation is 20, second flight reservation is 80, and third flight reservation is 50, 80 plus 20, 100 plus 50, 150. Here we subtracted 5 reservations from first flight, that 5 reservations did not add to second flight, but before adding that 5 reservations to second flight, this total is calculated. So we got incorrect summary here. This is the incorrect summary problem. If we allow concurrency in uncontrolled manner, we will get such kind of epo problem. So concurrency control goal is to avoid inconsistency. And second one is database users execute statements without worrying about what other users are doing in database. The simple solution is execute statements in Isolation. Isolation means there is no interaction between transactions. It is like not allowing concurrency, but it is not possible in large databases because performance will be slow. So the solution is execute the statements with concurrency, but the result should be same as any one of the serial executions of those transactions without any inconsistency problem. Database might be inconsistent because of transaction failures. Failures are generally classified as transaction, system and media failures. There are several possible reasons for transaction to fail in the middle of the execution. Some of them are computer failure, maybe system crash, transaction or system error. Suppose if we do not properly handle the runtime exceptions like division with zero, transaction might fail. Local errors or transaction conditions detected by transaction like insufficient balancing account. The concurrency control method may abort transaction because it violates the serializability or there might be display use of physical problems. DBMS must not permit some operations of T to be applied on database while other operations of T are not means if transaction has some statements some of them executed properly others are failed such kind of scenario should not be there either all of these transaction statements should be executed or 
all of these transactions should be rolled back because this whole transaction is an atomic unit. If transaction executed these two statements properly and it fails, these two statements also needs to be rolled back. Otherwise, database will be in inconsistent state. The goal of recovery from failure is guarantee all of the operations executed or none of them executed regardless of failure. If concurrency is allowed in uncontrolled manner or because of system failures, database might be inconsistent. The solution for these two kind of problems is transactions. With the help of the transactions, we can avoid this kind of concurrency and recovery problems.